Hey guys, how's it going? Let's see if you guys can see and hear me. Pull up my I'm sleepy. I need an app. How are you guys? Can y'all see my starting screen? <laughs> hey, Nancy. Hey, Jen. Hey, Patrice. Hey, Go Kart. Thank you for the thumbs up. Yes. Thank y'all for hitting the subscribe button, too. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Dorothy. Hey, Jen B. Hey, Vanessa, good to see you. Hey, Crystal. Hey, classmates. Oh, do we have a whole class in here tonight? Yay, awesome. I'm trying to go streaming on TikTok at the same time. I don't know if it's working, but if I see you guys on TikTok, I may not be able to see both at the same time. I'm also streaming on YouTube, so I'm doing the best I can. Um, but hello. Hello, Campbell. Good to see you on TikTok. Hopefully this is going to work. We'll see. <laughs> I saw somebody else doing it today, and I was like, if they can do it, I can do it too. I, there's nothing that nobody else can do that I can't do, right? So I was trying. I'm trying here, and I don't like to be outdone. So there's got to be a way. If somebody else figures it out, then I can too. I was talking to somebody who had taken their exam recently, and they said something about some rules being on page 485 of the CPT book. I wonder if they have the right page. So I don't see a lot of rules on this page, but there are rules on 484. Hmm. I don't have a context. For what they were talking about, but I don't know. Uh, there is a rules to page 485 CPT 2023. Oh, I don't know what rule they are talking about, but... I know there's some rules on 484. Anyway, I was just curious. It's just looking at this, trying to think about it. Neurologic agents. One thing to note about that is if they are injecting anything that's neurological agent, because they say it like in codes 64630, it could be something as easy as alcohol phenol or glycerol so I have those AKA terms written down that might be helpful as far as these pages go we do have rules here on that page 484 about coding certain things once per extremity so I don't know I don't know what rules they're talking about on 485 but y'all Y'all are really super um, smart, and y'all may know what she was talking about as far as rules go. And I think we were still talking about Botox being injected. Um, 
but that's the only information I got is what page. She said something about some rules. Hey, Georgina. Hey, Meds Coder. Happy to see you. Happy Friday. Oh, is it Friday? Gosh, I thought Wednesday was Friday. Finally Friday. Hey, Blondie. Hey, Allie. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy to help. Happy to help. I got some really good questions for you guys today. Allie's going to be taking her exam, right, pretty soon, 717, something around there, or no? That's a live. That date is already passed, I wonder. What I had written down. I know, Kimberly is 9-9. We've got April on August 5th. Dev is on July 29th. Craig is on the 29th also. Good luck for everybody. What pens do I use? I can show you that. Easy. Um, I have some new ones I'm fixing to try out, but so far this year, because the books have been super, a lot thinner than they were before, I have been using Big Intensity. These, you can get them from the Dollar General store, but the main thing is I'm getting the 0.4 mm, and I get the bold colors instead of the, the pastel colors. So I've been liking the big intensity. And it's not a roller ball. What it is, it's, it's a marker. So it's it's like a paint marker. It it um it doesn't have a roller ball at the end. You don't want anything you have to press down on to to make it go. You want something as light as touch as possible to make things work. And um, it's like a felt tip end, but it's super super tiny, and it just glides across the paper like you're painting. But that's what I use. It's big intensity. Let me see if TikTok people were able to see it. No. Uh, TikTok people were not able to see that for some reason. My camera um, that I can show on top of the live can only be shown, can only show either YouTube or TikTok. It won't show you guys at the same time. But the name of the pen is BIC, B-I-C, Intensity. And it's the fine point, 0 0.4 mm. I also have a picture of those pens and what it looks like on my website at medicalcodingbygen.com. If you do go to the website under gallery, what do you want, Jaybird? <laughs> he just got the look, <laughs> and he walked back out. Sorry, my kids. Uh, there's a free gallery there full of pictures of what cameras do I use, what, um, just anything. What, what um, external camera should we use? What pens do I use? What do I use to carry the books around in? How do I get an ADA? Um, to get an extra hour to take the exam. Um, all that stuff is all posted there for free for you guys under the gallery view. Hey, Campbell. Sorry about that, but I am streaming on YouTube, too. You'll get multi-screen view on YouTube if you guys want to head over there. Or you can stay here on TikTok, whatever. Hey, Norma. Sorry. But you see the mouse moving over the cursor. It's crazy. Yeah. There's, I'm running two streams at the same time, and I think they're not going to show everything for both lives. But I do have practice questions that I can show you guys. YouTube is just Medical Coding by Jen. 
dot com, you know, at Yahoo, I mean, or at ya at YouTube. There we go. Dot com. We did a few of these questions Wednesday, but I didn't have the page numbers down where you could find some of the answers. So I went back and put some of the page numbers down for you guys so that y'all would have them on some of these questions. But has anybody got questions on any particular CPT codes or anything y'all want to ask before we get started with questions today? What's been, been oh, Vanessa was in the MIA. Oh, bless her heart. You know, that's how um, Priscilla Presley passed away with a intestinal issue. So you got to be very careful. Those can sneak up on you. I hope you are on the men's and are feeling better. Elizabeth is doing hers on August 19th. Trying to keep up with everybody so I can make sure that I get some good stuff out there before then. Elizabeth is getting done on August 19th. I asked a question on your website, and you got back to me quickly. So thank you so much for all your help. Oh, you're welcome, Christine. It was either me or Twinkle. It could have been Twinkle. She answers a lot of emails for me, too. So <laughs> it was one of us. Don't forget to tap the screen, TikToks, she's saying. Oh, thank you. Hey, Jody and Sandy. Both taking the exam tomorrow. Oh, my. Best of luck. Dollar General. Dollar General has those on there. If the screen is blurry for you, be sure to go to um, tap your YouTube screen where it's playing the video. See, we're live right here. So you're going to tap your screen as soon as the advertisements go by. And there's going to be this little wheel at the top. It's a little settings wheel. You're going to click that, but it's going to be up here at the top of your screen. And you're going to change your video settings to... Um, well, how have we got to do 15 seconds of advertisement? You're going to change your video setting 20 to a higher uh, video settings show you what that looks like in just a sec. All right. Now that we're in here, you see that wheel is right there. You'll get this quality. You'll tap that and you'll change your settings from auto to higher picture quality. That'll switch your view to where it's not fuzzy anymore. And I hope that is helpful. Oh, we're going to get off that. There we go. There's a delay. Delay in the field. And since I'm here in chat, I'm going to go on and give away a YouTube membership. Subscribing is for free, and everybody gets access to all my free replays of all my lessons but if you do want to pay $4.99 a month you get access to the exclusive videos which are the old workshops and the book prep videos and repeats of TikToks but I also give those away because we have people that give us gifts on TikTok and stuff and super chats here on YouTube so I use that money to give back to you guys to give y'all YouTube memberships. Who won this one? Bernice won it. Yay. Congratulations. I hope that helps you out. I hope those extra videos help out a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, me or Twinkle, one of the two were answering the questions. We've been trying. Had a lot of questions this week. Always happens right around the workshops because people can't find the link or something like that, but 
Love your material. I was referred to a friend for 21 days. I take your test tomorrow, Tiffany. Oh, Lord. Okay, we've got a set of uh, helpful info that would be helpful for you guys for tomorrow. Let's write this out real quick. We know. Be sure and know what. Is that right? That. We want A-R-D-S. We want W-A-R. This tumor, we want NCCI, we want ALS, BLS, we want HIPAA, um, we want MYRING versus, versus, what's the other one? The other one is um, T. T, my ring, and then the ear, the, the tubes, the tube placement, um, tube placement, tube placement. We're not in the ears. I know you guys know. Where's our ear? Male, female, nervous. Mm. Auditory. Our differences between our, yeah, my ring and middle ear and our timpanti. Yeah, T Y M P. And then also, you want to know that new hernia, the new hernia codes, the new, 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 new hernia. You want to know about the differences between four and nine. Five nine three versus four nine six one five. Um, what else do we have on our list, guys? I know y'all know a bunch. Yep, we want to know about those. Yep, yep, yep. ABNs, yes. ABN, what's your ABN modifier? Um, what about that other modifier? Um, our lab modifier. Lab modifier. Um, we want to know um, about appendix. Appendix. A, is it K? Yep. You want to know about appendix K because that will save you a bunch of time when you get asked uh, which of these codes is pending uh, federal approvement or whatever. You can just run to appendix K and search those lists really quickly. Super easy. It's a lot easier than um, looking up every single code. Um, individually, a whole lot easier to do it that way. Um, Appendix D does the same thing. If they ask you which one is an add-on code, you can just run Appendix D because that's just a full list of everything that's an add-on code. Super handy dandy to do that one. And Or anything else? Those are the resequenced crosswalk. No, no, no. Those are handy. Which one? There's an appendix back here for which one um, is um, modifier uh, 51 excluded or 50 something excluded? Which appendix is that one, guys? 
Where is that appendix? FDA approval. There's another one back here. Uh, appendix F, 63. Modifier 63. Appendix F. Nowhere this is modifier 63 excluded. You don't have to go to each code individually. You can just run here to Appendix F and look through these because they're in numerical order and find the one that's the correct answer. And there's also Appendix E that's the 51 modifier. Yeah, Appendix E is the full list of the 51 modifier excluded. So that's handy, handy, handy dandy. Um, what are some other things that people have said could be handy dandy to know? Let's see. Oh, anesthesia. Get all those anesthesia. Yep. Anesthesia modifiers. Yep. So anesthesia modifiers. They're in the Hit Picks book, but if you could move them to your page 61, if you are in 2023 CPT book. Move them there, and they are modifiers A, 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 D, G, 8, G, 9, G, C, Q, K, Q, S, Q, X, Q, Y, Q, Z. Move those to your anesthesia pages. I like to put them on page 61. That way you don't have to have open both books and search for those Definitions, the main things you need to know is MAC is QS, CRNA ones, the QX, the QY, and QZ are handy dandy to know, and then AA for personally um, assisted by the anesthesiologist. The two or more one, QK, is popular too, so be sure to know those modifiers and move those into your CPT book, and that should be super helpful for the exam. Anybody taking it tomorrow? These are common things that are always asked about. Helpful to know. All right, let me get back down here to this one. So our page number for this one, for the centimeters, so how our skin graphs done? Are they measured in centimeters, square centimeters, percentages, or body area, or inches? Square centimeters, and that's on page 94 of your 2023 CPT book. Yeah, where is the Warthon's tumor? Where is it, Sadie? What body part does that culminate on? That's what you're going to need to know. Is it a good idea to take the first test attempt just for fun, even if we haven't reviewed any of the chapters? That's exactly what I did, Flower. <laughs> I didn't want to learn medical coding. I don't need it for my job, but um, I just wanted to take the test and pass it. So I went and scheduled my first attempt right off the bat. Old books and all, just really old books. And um, I scheduled it and went in. And that way I knew exactly from having done the exam what I needed to study from that point on. So that's what I did. I put no pressure on myself and um, went in there and took it just so I could figure out what do I need to study to pass it. Because there's so much to learn with medical coding 
and I needed to narrow that down quite a bit. <laughs> All right. Our next one was, what is the medical term for two hollow organs together surgically? Um, if we're going to take two hollow organs and we're going to join them together, what is that called? A closure, destruction, uh, reconstruction, or anosmostasis? Oh, I can never say that one. And this one we did do on Wednesday. It's all over the CPT book. There's quite a few pages. It goes, for, it's pretty much in every chapter. So I've got page numbers down from uh, 112, 285, 304, and 361. And then I stopped writing it down. There's just, it's described everywhere. And it doesn't have to be hollow organs. Um, it could be two arteries, two veins, but it's still a syndrical type of thing that they're sealing up but it's a circle that's kind of cut in half so it's cool and what about our removal of our ovaries here are we doing what's the definition are we uh, creating a hole removing an ovary are we removing ovaries and tubes what are we doing with this one? Thanks, TikTokers, for all the likes and the shares. And we got 70 views, but no one on right now, I don't think. If it's still playing, I'm not sure. Everybody's throwing D in in on this one. Yep. We've got page 439 of the CPT book. Um, a lot of times they draw pictures uh, for definitions, so don't neglect to look at the pictures too. That can help you out here. Based on the word parts, what structure does P-A-R-A-O-N-Y-C-H-I-A -A refer to? Are we talking about hair, nail, sweat glands, or parathyroid? Thank y'all for the thumbs up on YouTube. Y'all are awesome. We've got nail on this one, and that's on page 79 of the CPT book. You can also look up in the ICD-10 around B37.2 to find the same definition, too. There. Who won that one? Sadie did. Aw. I've got some cardiology procedure... Um, questions coming up and some diagnosis ones coming up too all right what about this cyst right here where is it originating from are we going to be talking about gallbladder liver common bile duct or the intestine when we say we're dealing with this type of cyst what do you guys think with a hema Y'all used to be able to still bring medical dictionaries. When I took my CPC, we were able to have a medical dictionary 
but that was back in 2019. They've gotten rid of that and won't let us bring one now. What do you guys think? Good job. That's going to be on page 380 of the CPT book, and they have a picture there. Which of the following membranes, I remember doing this one Wednesday too, was part of the digestive system, mucus, serous. This one's a nerve. Every time I see the Y, I know we're dealing with nerves or cutaneous. We are dealing with the mucus, and we're in the AAPC. ICD-10 book 2023. If I reference anything in the ICD-10 book as far as a page number, it will always be the AAPC version. Um, and we're on page 745 for that answer. Which layer of the epidermis is normally found in the palms of the hands and the soles of the... A difference in the last word. Same thing, we're in the ICD-10 book on page 773. All right, I think these are going to be some newer questions that we haven't done yet. I'm thinking we're getting close. The heart receives deoxygenated blood in the right atrium via what vessel? I had a question like this on my exam. Something about... Blood coming in from the, some artery and out to something else. They wanted to know which. So where would you guys find the answer for this one? You probably find it in both books, the CPT and the ICD-10, probably. Especially since you've got those pictures drawn with the arrows of all the heart and the way the blood's flowing. Page 226 ought to be able to help you out with this. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? Everybody likes A. C, inferior superior vena cava. I found this answer on, in the ICD-10 book on 671. Receives deoxygenated blood in the right atrium via which vessel? So we don't have any oxygen left. The pulmonaries have oxygen in them, right? Heart circulates blood through the lungs. I think this is the one that I had. Something about the lungs. Which is sent back to the left atrium of the heart via what vessel? So the heart circulates blood through the lungs and is sent back into the left atrium. Of the heart via which vessel? Pulmonaries, vena cava, or aorta? Left and right pulmonary arteries, B. Good job. Which term is for inflammation of the heart and its vessels? Harry, what do you think? Inflammation of the heart is called what? Good job. 
ICD-10 book, page 677. What is the inner layer of the heart called? Pericardium. That reminds me of something that was on somebody's exam recently. What was that word? It was a metas, metas, um, the lining around the heart. Or no, the lungs, the lungs. What's the lining around the lungs to add to our little list? Uh, metastatum, something like that. This one, endocardium, page 671. What causes cyanosis? If you do look up this in the index, it says the word blue. That's it. What somebody was on somebody's exam, M-E-D-I-A-S-T-I-N-U-M. So people that are taking their exam on Saturday, be sure you know what this word means, which has nothing to do with this question right now. I'm just adhd in here for a moment. Uh, it's flowing hard today. What causes somebody to be blue? Drinking blue liquids, right? <laughs> On page 117 of the ICD-10 book, you can find um, definition of the that. The lymphatic ducts empty their contents into what structure? Is it the aorta, subclavian veins, pulmonary veins, or femoral artery? We have two veins. So I like to look for similarities. If you had no clue, what would you pick for this one? Yep. Allie, be sure and know that word. Yes, Edith. Be sure to know that. That's the dividing thing between your lungs. It divides your two sets of lungs. You know, well, you've got five technically, but. The area between the lungs. Yes. Be sure you know that for your exam. Y'all are taking it tomorrow. There is no camera, Edith, on my part. This is just a direct screen of my computer screen. It is no camera. Uh, you need to change your settings in YouTube to upgrade your video quality to a higher quality. You can also refresh your screen and see if that helps. But I don't, I don't stream with a camera anymore. This is just my desktop computer showing you a Word document. We are in the subclavian vein. 
And the answer to this question is in your ICD-10 book on page 746. Which anatomical structure in the urinary system differs in position and length between the male and female, but serves the same function in regards to urine as is often treated the same? Is it a ureter, urethra, bladder, or kidneys? Yay, awesome, great, Edith. I think there was an anatomy question about urethra, too, on the exam recently. I don't know. Could be wrong. Page 895 of the ICD-10 book. Which appendix could be useful when determining the order of vessels for selective catheterization? Everybody should know about this appendix. Yep, Appendix L. Which vessel transports blood from the body to the heart muscle? Are we talking about coronary arteries, bundle of his, aorta, pulmonary arteries. Almost done with all these anatomy ones. And then we're going to get into ICD-10 and then some CPTs. And I haven't done any of these questions before. They're all brand new. Nothing I've ever showed before. So I haven't even worked them. So we'll just do them together. A, <laughs> coronary arteries. Saw everybody hitting blue, B. Which type of circulation delivers nourishment throughout the body? Pulmonary, systemic, atrial, or coronary? Good job, Mugan. What type of circulation delivers nourishment to the body? Thank you, Jen, on TikTok for the roses. I just had to end the TikTok live because the stream is slowing down so slow. And I'm getting these red alerts on OBS. So 
I just ended it hoping that the YouTube stream gets a little faster and not so glitchy. Systemic B on this one. Which of the following is a normal pacemaker in the heart? Which one is our normal pacemaker? AV node, SA node, the whatever fibers or a bundle of his. Looking at these, I still like to look for similarities. I see we have two nodes. So it'd probably be just, do we know if it's going to be SA or AV? Because these two both end in the word node. A lot of times it's just looking for similarities, even in numbers with these exam questions. But sometimes I'm wrong. It's rare. Huh. I don't know what W. Oh, somebody's got a kitty cat going across the screen, I think. <laughs> Miss Violet. Yep, don't ever change your first impression or your first thought. If you think it's going to be um, one thing or another. Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. I can. Here we go. Maybe she can come back in when she gets the kitty cat off of her... Uh, screen or something, but here we go. Maybe that'll help. All right. There we go. Essay node. SA node is our normal pacemaker. Which valve is located between the right atrium and the right ventricle? <laughs> Asking you shall receive. That's right. I was hoping it was just a kid or somebody walking across the screen. <laughs> Which valve is located between the right atrium and the left atrium? You still find that in your CPT book on that heart drawing. Tricuspid, good job. C, which layer of the heart covers the heart's outer surface? Outer surface. So epi, endo, another epi, and a myo. So we have three that start with the letter E. And you know epi means on top. So it shouldn't be too hard. Epicardium. All right. ICD-10. Move this CPT out of the way for a second. And... <laughs> Just like with CPT, I like to just go to the codes first, see which one I, we think we're going to be. If we're doing a syndrome, are we going to be in the K's 
or the eyes. A, B, C, D, E, F. I and then J and then K. I is under disease of the circulatory system. K. J and then K. K is diseases of the digestive system. Barlow syndrome. Are we circulatory or are we digestive with that? Hmm. Let's see, this is uh, digestive, right? And then these are circulatory. Looking for similarities. If that was unhelpful, I would probably just go to the I-34s first because we've got two of them, and they probably are just wanting to know if we know the difference between I-34.1 or the O. And I-35, do we have any listings of what the diagnosis underneath? Sometimes it's helpful to stop at the I-34 and you get a list of some diagnoses right underneath. We've got pericarditis, acute and subcute endocarditis. We've got non-rheumatic valve disorders. We've got an insufficiency or thirty five is an atrial valve disorder. Oh. What do you guys think about an answer for this one? Would our ICD-10 book be any helpful with telling us what bar lows are doing the lymphatic? What about our diseases of the heart? Does anything say anything about Barlow's here? Common pathologies. Hmm. Where is... I know it's mitral valve, but I wonder how y'all would know it. When we have a mitral valve issue, I wonder where it would be in here in this book. I wonder. Uh, no, I need to go here. So, I was just seeing if by chance. If I could go here and go back to our books. And see if I could show you. I wonder if they have it in the ICD-10 book. Or have you got to be super clinical and know this one? Oh. Nope, you just got to know it. Oh, no. Oh, Lord, that's unhelpful. Okay. Okay. 
What are you guys coming up with here? Look at Twinkle. Congratulations. Yeah, it is mitral valve prolapse. I was just wondering, how would you guys know that if you didn't already know that? So, very interesting. You are correct that it is, who, who did that? We had one brave, Casey. Casey did answer this one correct. Hey, Travis, what you want? What? She's cooking now. She's making cheese balls and a pea nickel milk. Meatballs are on the Ooh, meatballs. All right, cool. So what I would do to make your notes even better is to go to your I-34.1. Be sure right here we can write Barlow's syndrome for your notes right there. That way you've got it the next time you see this. Something that's also super helpful for your medical coding exam is this picture right here. This picture, I've, I don't like to tab a lot of things in the books at all, and I don't use the tabby things at all, but that particular picture, I put a tab at the top for that one. I like that picture. Myocarditis. Looking at the differences between uh, hypertrophic and dilated, myopathy is cool. What's another thing that I have tabbed up here? I only have something else. Um, looks like I have pharyngitis tabbed for some reason. I liked having this picture for some reason. But that's it. That's the only things I got tabbed in this lovely little book. <laughs> But that page right there, yeah, that one's could be important. And let me get the right there. Barlow syndrome is mitral valve prolapse. It is, and you know how you would find that without an indication. They're saying go to the index. But even if you went to the index, how would you even know to look up prolapse? It doesn't make any sense. That's just so unhelpful. And there doesn't seem to be anything in the ICD-10 book to tell you about that diagnosis. And that that's an AKA term for mitral valve prolapse. You could also put it at the very beginning of the cardiovascular Diagnosis tab page for the circulatory system where they have the beginning of the anatomy syndrome, you know, anatomy right there, super helpful. But also, your very first page where you're doing any diagnosing for the circulatory system, it could be something you could write here too. And the more times you write it, the more you won't forget it too. Let's try this one. If we have this type of blockage, where are we going to be? We're all in the I-44s. I-44.0. Oh. We've got arctioventral block first degree. This looks like it's labeled as two. And then we got Point one says second degree. Point two says it's a complete blockage. And then 07 says it is the left bundle branch blockage. What do you guys think for this one? Six ninety one. Yep, I like that page. Uh, 
That's only if you have the IAPC 2023 version of the book. See, my 2022 version had that page tab too. <laughs> I keep it tabbed. I like that page. Some other things that I had in my notes from last year on that page with the hearts listed I added um, atrial fib you know we're gonna order our pro time Coumadin RX but I put the long-term use of medication code up here which is the Z79.01 with it also so that if I ever have to diagnose somebody with the mitral valve prolapse, I know we're going to be ordering a proton, but I'm also going to be diagnosing them with the long-term use of the medication, which is that Coumadin. So keeping it all together, instead of having it separated all in the books all over the place, can be super helpful. And that's part of my ICD-10 notes that I have for you guys, which is helpful. Oh. Yep, I think this one's easier. We can at least decide on whether we're one or two here. Super, it's a lot easier. At least that one's more straightforward. Perfect. What about a congenital heart block? What if it's congenital? Are we gonna do the I section or are we gonna be in the Q section, right? Q is... The red headers, it starts out with the word congenital malformations. So you know right away, just thinking about that eyes are for diseases of the circulatory system, but that cues are for all congenital malformations. You know right away when they say that word congenital that you can get rid of A and B. And that gets you down to 50-50 shot. Then we just got to go see what our differences are between those 24s. Super helpful. Point O is the Dexter, and point six is the congenital heart block. Says it plain on out. Super nice, super handy dandy. I don't know why it says look in the freaking index. I'm not going to have time for that. We're just going to say Verify on the tabular list. Silliness. Silliness. Can't do that. All right. Pericardial tumor. If we have one that is malignant, are we going to be in the C's or the D's? If we are in the C's, are we going to be in the C3's or the C7's? Just looking at them from numerically, I would go to B and C first because they're the most similar and super close together. I probably wouldn't look up the D or the C79 because I know once I pass a higher number in the C sections, I know I get into secondary. They're secondary cancers because stuff is metastasized. So I would still be convinced that I needed to stay in the C3s. 
Let's go see. Also, one cool thing is if you just go to C00, you've got a purple header that says malignant neoplasms. If you go to the D00, you're going to have another purple header that says insight U neoplasms. You can decide, am I going to be malignant? Or am I going to be in sight you neoplasms? Just based off the purple headers. But that also gets me to get rid of this because we're going to stay right here with the malignant, right? So now we're going to go to C38. thirty-eight point zero and the point one. Point O is of the heart, and point one is of the anterior metastatum. Where would a pericardial tumor be located? Are we anterior? Also, don't forget to look for your includes. Is right underneath that um, malignant neoplasm of the heart. It does say malignant neoplasm of the pericardium. Grandma needs more milk. I'm not even asking. It's not even for me. What? She needs more milk. Yeah. Order some more. Yep. Are any of my wife's in here? No. Oh, oh Jane, I'm so confused. Order milk. We need milk. <laughs> Kids came into the house. What did you guys think the answer is for this one? B? Yep, we are going to be B. It's right underneath it. Perfect. Good job. All right, what about acute dystolic heart failure? Are we going to be in the I's or are we going to be in the P's? So I, looking for similarities, there's a whole bunch of I's. I'd gravitate towards that. I is diseases of the circulatory system. And then P, is that baby stuff? What is P? Isn't that supposed to be for, like, newborns? I don't know. Certain conditions orient, orient, orientating from the perinatal period. How long does a perinatal period last? If you got my ICD-10 notes that I just published yesterday for the top 10 guidelines, there is a guideline for this perinatal period and how long it lasts. That's in my notes, too, by the way. But we have no mention of this being a newborn or anything, so I'd get rid of the P. So I-50. I-53-0. And 3130 is unspecified. 31 is acute. Whoops, I wrote them wrong, didn't I? Yep. 30 is unspecified. 31 is acute. And 9 is unspecified. Also. Good night, all. Good night, Elizabeth. See you next week. I hope this is helpful. We're going to do some CPT codes. Um, 
My very next question is combining CPTs and diagnosis codes, which is going to be helpful because we've not done these questions before. There you go. The one that says acute. Easy peasy. All right. Back to our CPT. And since every single question starts out with a different CPT code, I would just look up the differences between the CPT codes and roll with that. So if we were doing 33206, don't read the questions first. We are inserting a new pacemaker if we're 06. 12 is a temporary new temp 233. Then we got our two, two, eight. That's the removal. And a removal. Are we inserting or removing is the first thing I'd look up to see what we're doing. Be right back. Say something to Travis real quick. Travis! Come here. In my room right now. Make my mama get all over you. What's wrong with you? You don't own that bathroom, and he was getting a shower. Leave him alone. I quit talking to him that night. You are not his parent. Just because you couldn't get to your facial wipes right when you wanted to is no reason to accost him like that. You need to take your hormones and chill. You hear me? Mm. What? Chillax, bud. Making my mama yell at you. Boy. All right. We are dealing with an elderly patient who has a dual chamber pacemaker. Are they just replacing the battery? She's admitted to change her battery. So all we are doing is replacing her generator, right? What did you guys come up with an answer for? I'm not even worried about the diagnoses. We can pick it straight from the CPT code. Put on your blinders. That's going to have you running into three or four different books. You don't have to do that if you just pick out the right CPT code. It's a much faster and more efficient way of doing it. It's not to worry about all that. We're just looking for replacing that battery, right?
right here all we did was she has a dual lead system right yep she has dual So all we did was remove her pulse generator and replace her pulse generator. So I like our D because that's just replacing her battery, taking the old one out and putting a new one in. What do you guys think? Yep. There's the rationale for the diagnosis code, though. She did have a secondary diagnosis of an AV block. The T code is for the injury or issue that she's having right now, which is replacing the battery. And I-44.1 includes our Winchell Black block. Does it say that inside there? I'm curious. I-44. So if it doesn't, we can add it. I-44, does it say anything? Yep, it does. It's got it listed underneath I-44. If you stop by it, it's got the, the Reckenbach block. Reckenbach block. <laughs> That's a fun one to say. All right. Let's look at this one. We've got either the 206 or the 208. What's the differences between those CPT codes? 33, 206. And then 208 is a child code to that parent. This parent is atrial. If we're doing 208, we're doing atrial and ventricular, where 206 is just atrial. So go look through your thing. Figure out if you're doing atrial and ventricle. If you are, then you know right away you're doing 08. So that means you can get rid of these two right away. Super handy dandy. Are we doing... A circulatory diagnosis with a symptom diagnosis or just a cardiovascular diagnosis? What would we do? Do we need to be doing these symptoms? Or do we just need to do the one diagnosis that we have? Makes the question a lot easier. Good job, Tammy. Awesome. This one, we're not going to use our symptoms. Remember, if you've got a regular, you know, diagnosis, we don't use any symptoms. You only use symptoms if you have no other option. You won't see symptoms with a real diagnosis. Why are you yelling at him? Why? Over white? Because I need to wind my face. We're taking over like a half an hour, like so? seven minutes to 
freaking in the shower. You've had all day. I did it today, and I need to do again. Travis, you have been awake all day long. You've had multiple times to get into that bathroom. You still don't see that you had the right? You do not have the right to yell at him because he's in there getting a shower. For however long it takes him, it doesn't matter if he's in there for 30 minutes. You don't yell at him for that. You don't. He's wasting water too at the same time. You don't yell at him. Can I get you then? I already told you that you did not need to do it then. You've already told me about him being in the shower and that you needed your wipes. I was not concerned, right? Right? Yes, you're right. Chill. You have all day and all night. <sighs> all right. We've got... Ooh, three of them are the 64 codes. Only one of them is 25. So it's probably going to be one of these 64s. Would we add, they all have the T codes. T9 is done twice here, which is interesting to me. I don't know whether it's handy dandy or not. And then we've got one with an extra code in it or not. What's going on in ours? Three, three, two, six, four. Three, three, two, six, four. Are we under the right header? Three, 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 two, six, four is a child code. I can't do much with that one. I got to go up to mama. Mama is a removal of an implantable defibrillator multi-lead system. Is that what we're doing today? We do have a malfunctioning generator. It does have multiple leads. And during the same session, a left ventricle lead was placed in a coronary sinus. So we did do the removal, so I do like our 64, but does 64 include placing a left ventricle lead? 33225? 33225? Two, 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 is an add-on code for inserting a pacing electrode and it does say ventricle pacing which this does say ventricle so maybe we did do two procedures mm. sorry I'm sitting here doing the question I've never done these before so I'm not letting y'all do them I'm like sitting here doing them with you but I think we are D what do you guys think it's unusual to have two CPT codes be the answer for AAPC, but I think we did do two procedures. What do you guys think? <laughs> Kids had all day. <laughs> Good night, Vanessa. You want to see my 30 pound kitty cat? My 30 pound kitty cat. He's sitting here talking. He's sitting here. Let's see. Can y'all see Lester? Lester. Yeah, that's my Lesty. That's my Lester. That's my buddy. Buddy. <laughs> He's sitting right behind me as usual. <laughs> always. Always. Why would you say that? You've had your brother, James, since you were five years old, and you're sitting here saying, 
you well, miss being only two children in this home. No, really? No. You, really? You're going to say that? About your baby brother, James? No. He said worse about me. He has not said worse about yes, you. Yes, I have it on recording. That's so mean. He had two failed adoptions where all of his adopted parents died on him. And then we got him when he was five. And now you're like, I miss it when it was just me and John. <laughs> you have to share a bathroom with your baby brother. My goodness. I'm sorry it's an inconvenience. I mean, I'm spoiled rotten. I don't have to share a bathroom with none of y'all. But my goodness. Oh. There's my 30-pound kitty cat. Oh, yeah. There's my 30-pound kitty cat. My goodness, Travis, you're just full of not nice thoughts today. Maybe you need to go take a nap till you get some nicer thoughts in your head. That's not nice. Oh. Oh. Poor baby. You have to share a bathroom. My goodness. You should be happy he took a shower. You know how hard it is to get 13-year-old boys to take showers? I do. Right? And you're going to be mad at him for being in there for 30 minutes? Yes! I don't take that long. It's because he's got more body parts. And I don't. <laughs> you're as big as a string bean, buddy. You need to go eat a cheeseburger. Come on. Think happy thoughts. One of these days, I'm not going to be around. He's going to be the only one around who cares anything about you because I'll be gone. He's going to be there. He's the I'll only one that's going to be there. The dead if I have you to. are not bringing me back from the dead. I will not come. <laughs> I'm 52, buddy. I'm not going to be around forever. You would most, like to think about that. You know, I don't have any women, brothers and sisters. I don't have anybody. Most make it to 100 years old. So Who makes it to 100 years old? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. She's got all of UK keeping her alive. And that did not work. I don't think she made it to 100 years old, baby. Made it to 99. No, I'm not going to make it to the end. You're going to have to. You're going to be, you know. Not if you keep on bruising yourself by falling off a freaking scooter. Oh, hush. Go apologize to my mother and your brother, oh. and you be nice. Yes, both of them. Think happy thoughts. Child. <laughs> I know. I know them boys are always in those bathrooms forever. I don't want to know what they're doing, but, you know, let them be in there. If they're getting covered in water, thank God. At least they're getting in there, in there for some reason. Whatever it is, it's wonderful. Great. All right. Do y'all think this is two? Uh, yeah. We are dealing with two procedures. That's cool. A lot of times their questions are trying to trick you into thinking you have to do two codes, but it's not. But this one actually did take two codes. All right, another one. We've got three of them that are in the 45s. So what is going on? Then we've only got one in the three fives. That's probably a totally different header. So three, four, five. He's just stressing. He starts high school, not this Monday, but next Monday. And he is stressing out. So he's wanting to get in there to his clindamycin facial wipe thingy. He used to get rid of acne. So he's just stressing and he's taking it out on everybody else. Three, four, five. Where are we at? Three, four, five. Oh, one. 
Ooh, embolism. We're going to remove some blood clots. Blood clots. Is that what we're doing? Or are we in the 335? 335 is going to be way somewhere else. Under headers, different headers. 33530. That's an add on code. 33530 is an add on code. That cannot be your only CPT code for a particular answer. So you know right away that can't be the answer. Anything with the plus symbol in front of it can't be your only CPT code. It has to be a secondary code. So that's handy dandy. And then, am I any, I'm not even in the right codes. Three, four, five, a one. I stopped at the wrong one. Vastoplasty. Not, not the embolisectomy. So we're femoral vein. <clears throat> Are we femoral vein? Yep, femoral vein, good. We need our right, yep. Okay, so then we're gonna have to decide, do we need another diagnosis code? Would we be removing a embolectomy? Are we doing that? No, it's not embolectomy. What was that code about? It was an add-on code for something. 33530, that's for reoperation. We're not doing a reoperation. Nope, that's a redo. Redo. And we're not doing that. So, just a difference between I-73 and I-70. Since I-70 is in all the other answers. Mm -hmm. Let's go look. I-70. I-70 is arthrosclerosis of the aorta. I-73. is other peripheral vascular diseases. We're not gonna be an other. They rarely pick other or unspecified. I bet it's the 170, right? Hmm. 173.9, or are we doing 170 is arthrosclerosis of the aorta. What are we doing? We had for, for elderly patient for ongoing peripheral, but we are doing peripheral. We're not doing arthrosclerosis. That other one did say peripheral, didn't it? Did say peripheral. Yeah, that matches better. What? Yeah, A. What did you guys get? I think I'm going to pick A. That's the only one that says peripheral. The other one says arthrosclerosis. Good night, Jen. You like the pacemaker questions? That's awesome. All right, let's see. Good, A. A is correct. Good job. Let's see. We've got 76 and 75. Let's go see what our differences are real quick. 3, 5, 8. 3, 5, 8. Never shown these questions before, so these are all new. 3, 5, 8, 7, 5, and 7, 6. 7, 6 is a child. It's a revision. And then the other one is fistula. Somebody that was taking their exam recently said they were asked about a fistula and where was that located. It's another ADHD moment. 
for people that are taking their exam this weekend. We have an open thrombectomy. Is it with a revision or a graft? Are we keeping A and B, or are we keeping C or D? What do you guys think? Because based off the wording of the CPT code, thrombolectomy arterial or venous graft other than hemodialysis graft or fistula. Then the six says revision of or the venous graft. We have the arterial graft with revision. So yeah, we'll just keep those A and B. Then we just have to decide, are we in 80? 2.3 or are we in 82.8 T82.8 that says other specified complications of a prosthetic device implants or grafts and then 82 Three. Mechanical complications due to vascular graft. Is this mechanical or Other specified complications. Very interesting. I don't think we're mechanical. I think I'd stay here with the 82.8 with the other because it says graphs in it. And then the other one, point three, says mechanical device. Three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two is mechanical femoral artery bypass graft. Are we femoral? Mm, no, we're ilio femoral. Three, one, two, three, one, two. Three, two. Three, one, two. And eight, six, eight. 868 says thrombosis, vascular implants, grafts. It even has the thrombo word in it. Love it. I like A. B312. Three one two says breakdown of mechanical femoral arterial graft bypass when R eight eight six eight says thrombosis due to vascular implants and grafts. So that matches more than the three one two. It even has the thrombosis, the, yeah, thrombosis in it. Does that make sense? Because I know quite a few of you pick B. It's going to be A.
big old long one here. All right. Are we going to be 2-2 two, two or 2-0? Two, oh? Let's get that first before we worry about the diagnosis or anything. So 372 20 372 20 20 and 22 are they're both revascular cartilization, they're both endo, they're both open, they're both percutaneous. Both iliac artery. 2O is unilateral. And they both have transluminal angioplasty. They're both IPS. Well, they're both iliac arteries. This one is an add-on code. This one is an add-on code. Helps you to get rid of things super fast because you know that those can't be first in whatever we're doing. So that's helpful. Then you just have to know would we add a 7,000 to it or not? What radiology are they thinking that they might have added? Let's look. What would they have? If it's not ultrasound. We'll look at our 757. 757 what? 10? Angiography. What does this CPT code have already in it? It already has an angioplasty, but not an angiography. So we've got the angioplasty repair. But did we do an angiography? Yep. Plasty done. Plasty done. With a follow-up graphy again. So we've got them both done. So I guess we're going to do both of them. Yeah. We're going to do A again. All these answers seem to be A. Huh. <laughs> What do you guys think? Yep, match thrombosis with my... It is a giant matching game. That's exactly what it is. Absolutely. 100%. And this one, you know these are add-on codes, the 222, so you can't use those. Anyway, so that helps to eliminate those answers right away. Then you just need to know what's included in the 220, which is an angioplasty. But this one right here is an angiography. And if you did do it, then you do get to add it because that's not included in the uh, CPT code descriptor here. And that's it. Easy as that. The diagnosis was the same for all the answers, so that would not have been helpful. Hopefully nobody ran to the ICD-10 book, because that's just wasting your time. I don't read any of this mess. I just look for whatever the difference is in the question. So I only needed to look for the angio, plasty, and graphy. Made sure we did them.
it's hard. It's hard to be fast. It is. It takes a lot of time and practice. I am not going to do this one with you. I'm going to let y'all figure it out. Don't be reading that question. If you're already reading the question, you're doing it wrong. Make sure you go straight to these codes. See what your differences are. Make them bigger for you. Look for similarities. I like all the 62s, of course. Make sure you're under that header, that that's what you did. If it is, then all you got to do is see what your differences are between the 1, the 3, and the 4. Whatever those differences are, look and see what you did on your patient today. And only look for that difference. What do you think the answer is? How did I know it included the angioplasty? Um, the CPT code, look at 372, oops, 37220. The last word in the CPT code descriptor says angioplasty with transluminal angioplasty. That's how I knew it included the angioplasty but did not include the angiography. They were trying to see if you knew the difference between plasty, which is repair, and a graphy, angiography. That's not an angiography. That's how. I'm not a wizard. Although I pretend and act like I am. But A is not the answer for this one. Just so you know. It is one of B, C, or D for the next one. Thank you, Twinkle. game is a big matching game. It sure is. No worries, Rachel. You'll get this. Just takes time and practice. You've got it. Last sentence says code for the selective catheterization and the angiography. So 362, where are we at? 362, 21. Ooh, these are pink highlighted. 222223 are pink highlighted in my cardiovascular um, section. So 
pay close attention to these codes. Um, R21 is non-select. R22 and 23 are selective. So are we selective or are we non? It's the first thing I'd worry about. And selectively placed. Hint, hint. Another matching game. We get rid of our non, then it's just a difference between which selective we did. The two, three, and the two, four. Three and the four. What's our differences between those two? One of them's internal and one of them's common. Which one did we do? We did common. I only needed to look up two words in this whole note to figure out my answer is C. Pink highlights mean that somebody somewhere posted that code could be important on their exam this year or was important. Common. If you pick D, D is internal carotid artery. This was placed in the left common. If you look at 223, it's common carotid. I'm looking inside the CPT code descriptors. And there's a rationale for that. Y'all up to do one more? Or are y'all too tired? <laughs> Let's try one more. So looking at this, I see we got two with the same code. I go see what it's is first. Let's see if we're close. Let's see if we're under that header. Seven six oh six. Child code can't do much with that. We got to go up to Mama. Ligation. Are we doing a ligation? We are doing a ligation. And are we doing a ligation of the internal or common carotid artery? Common carotid artery. So, yep, we are under this header. We just need to know, would we add another code with it? Did we do two procedures or did we only do one procedure? Because the diagnosis code is the same no matter what. The granule occlusion is inside this code already, according to the CPT code descriptor, with a clamp, so I bet 
we may not need that extra one because it's just trying to see if we know what's included in that CPT code. Yep, time goes by fast, doesn't it, go-kart? Yep, D is R's answer, I believe, for this one. Let's see. Yep, good. Yep. I got two little baby anatomy ones, if y'all want to do these. Where is the pyloric sphincter located? Uh -huh. Neck of the bladder, duodenum. Metastatum, that's the word that was on somebody's exam recently. And from the colon of the no-no area, where would we be? This one duodenum, right? Pyloric pyloric duodenum. Yep. Duodenum. What about a position for radiology? Last question of the night, and we'll go. I'll be back on Monday. I will not have a live on Wednesday, taking the boys to the water park in Vegas for the day. We're going to go up on Tuesday and spend the night and be back Wednesday night sometime because they have school starting back again. Their summer's already done and over with. They start back to school next Monday. So we're just going to go up to the water park and spend the night up there and let them swim with a few of their friends. But we will be doing a live on Monday and Friday next week. So, and then we'll start back with um, Friday classes if anybody wants to attend on Friday morning classes. But the boys don't have school this year on Friday, so I may be changing those days. Um, classes, um, because unless they get detention, they only have to go to high school four days a week <laughs> this year. So there's no reason to get up that early on a Friday morning. We won't, because the rest of the week they have to be on the school bus at 6.50 in the morning. Good gracious. So I'll be up early the, the other days. So maybe we'll switch it to another day. But anyway, I know I've got some booked already. What is the positioning term for the radiology service described in the direction of the x-ray that travels from the front to the back? To the front. Yep. A is correct. Good job. A and P. Perfect. That's all the questions I had for tonight. I hope this was helpful. Best of luck to you guys who are taking your exam tomorrow. I hope some of that information has helped out that we added to our little list wherever it was this morning. Well, not this morning, but earlier today. all these questions from this week all in one page gosh they're everywhere yeah they're right here hopefully all this stuff helped and makes a difference for tomorrow best of luck to everybody
You're very welcome, Bernice. You two picks the winner, so that's hopefully that's super helpful. Um, I hope to see you guys back on Monday. And I will be publishing some more videos out on YouTube, too. I'm going through all my old videos and making sure they all made it to YouTube. Um, and just trying to clean up stuff and put stuff where it should be for the new books get here. We've got new books coming out pretty soon <laughs> for 2024. Oh, God. Y'all are very welcome. Best of luck to everybody taking their exam tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. Be sure and join the free di Discord group. If you're taking a medical coding course or anything, it is super helpful. It's 100% free. There's two years worth of information y'all can go back and look through. You can get help with all kinds of questions there. You can post your questions and queries and get help there all the time whenever you need it. Um, super helpful. Don't forget to join it. The link is in the YouTube header up at the top. So super helpful. I hope to see you guys there. And I will be back on Monday for sure, but I'm sure I'll be on TikTok live making. I'm working on this Excel sheet with all of the CPT codes listed and what to highlight in each CPT code. And then what do I have written underneath each code? Just an Excel sheet so that it's not page by page. Um, handwritten notes on top of the book where I have to pay the franchise fee back to AMA for them. This would make the document a lot cheaper um, because it's not copies of the pages in the, in the book. Um, but it's a list, an Excel sheet of every code and then what you just need to highlight and then what I have written underneath mine. And any tips or guidelines or anything that um, I want to add. So I'm still working on it right now. I'm almost through with e &M, sort of. <laughs> I'm working on it. I still have yeah, some of the ENMs, the 994 codes to go through. I still got to work on those. Yeah, the 994s. But I've gotten through all the 992s, all the 3s. And I just finished all the nursing home ones. And I made, y'all know that um, E&M sheet that's in the front that probably nobody likes, but um, page 8 and 9. I made one of those for, for nursing home visits. So what would be straightforward? What would be a low? What would be moderate? What would be high complex? What kind of services would the nurse see for nursing home visits? What combos would you use to make this? Anyway, I made one of these just for nursing homes. So I added that into the Excel sheet. Anyway, one of these days I'll eventually get done with this. And um, that'll make things a little bit cheaper for everybody. Because they're not going to be copies of these pages. Or I have to pay the franchise fee. But anyway, I'm working on it. And I'll be working on that this weekend. And I can go live on TikTok and let y'all do some practice questions with it. So... If y'all are around, come join me on TikTok. If not, I will see you guys on Monday. I hope this has been helpful. Just checking up on the chat. <laughs> we will try to be safe. Yes, water park is so much fun. Thank you, Dev, for saying so. That's awesome. I'm glad the videos help. Hey, Mabel. Thank you. Yep, there, everything's at medical coding. Check out the image gallery. Check out the resources tab. Uh, CPT book prep is underneath there. There's even some videos there for... Um, book prep, all for free, There's tons of stuff there, and then um, TikTok, 
Um, let's see. Do I have a link here? Discord. Yep, here's the TikTok link. There's the TikTok link. You can join in on there. It's all free. And then this is the Discord group. If you want to join the Discord group, it's all free. Just download the Discord app. So much helpful information there. And don't forget there is CMS free training and certificates you can earn that you can add to your resume directly from CMS at this point page. There's even an ICD-10 um, training thing right now on there where you can get a certificate for free that you can add to your resume. I always have to do the fraud and abuse training every year, and you can add that to your resume for free. Um, and that's what that CMS Gov outreach education link is for. Tons of little things that y'all can do there that are all free. I hope that's helpful. And a scholarship. If you've had AAPC membership and you've paid for it for a year already and it's time to renew and you still haven't passed your exam, Apply for a free grant right there. Ask them to give you more exam attempts. Ask them to give you new books. Ask them to give you practice exam questions. Fill it out monthly. Keep trying. Put huge sad sob story of anything or any stressful situations and any medical conditions or anything that could be hindering you. If you've got hard of hearing, anything like that, add it all in there. And keep applying for the grants because people are winning those. So the money is given to the chapters every month and then they get to pick a winner. So if your local chapter doesn't know who you are or you've never attended one of their meetings, sometimes attending one of those would be helpful too. At least they could put a face with an application of trying to get a free, um, anything free from AAPC. Even if you don't need it, Technically, I mean, we pay monthly $350 a year every year for this stuff. Um, you know, why not get one year for free? I mean, they're super expensive. And then you can also get them to help you cover another certificate. Let's say I wanted to do CEMC or something else or CRC. Get them to buy the books for you and pay for your membership for another year while you do another certificate or something. So... The money's there. They, they've, they're a multi-million dollar company, so why not fill out a grant application? Anyway, just my suggestion. <sighs> Love you guys. I will see you, if nothing else, on Monday.